So thanks, thanks for having us here to be able to, to preach. The assignment is something out of John. And so I've selected a familiar passage that you've probably heard at least once or twice before. And that's John chapter 3. And it's the story of Nicodemus. And where Nicodemus is in Jesus is having a, having a, a dialogue. And I'd love for you, if you've got your Bible, crack open to John chapter 3. And with your other finger... I'd like you to stick a finger in Numbers chapter 21. Numbers 21? Numbers 21. <coughs> Strange place to start when we're talking about John and I'm sending you to Numbers. Mm -hmm. But so the story in John chapter 3 is you've got Nicodemus and he's a Pharisee and he comes to Jesus at night. Interesting thought that he comes to him at night. Some commentary said, you know, was asking the question, was he a spy? And the general feel is no, because the, the Pharisees tackled Jesus during the day. They weren't ashamed to tackle him and try to embarrass him do, during the day. There was something about Nicodemus that wanted to get under the hood and have a, have a bit more of a look and have a conversation with him. That's why he came to him at night. And so then there's that dialogue about being born again and uh, about what that means for Nicodemus. And you'd be all very familiar with John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him must have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. But the verse before that, immediately before that, is a, is a strange verse. It is a, a reference about Moses. Verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake and a pole in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And then we know this is... Uh, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. It's a really, really strange verse. What on earth does it mean that Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness? Now remember, he's talking to a Pharisee. Jesus is talking to a Pharisee. So if we turn to Numbers chapter 21, verse starting at verse 6, but a bit of background. So the Israelites have just, um, they, they were attacked and they go, okay, God, help us out. And he says, right, yeah, go, go defeat them. And he blesses them and defeats them. And then they start complaining again. So there's this, this ebb and flow of, oh, we're being attacked. Yeah, you rescued us. Oh, and the, and the verse is, there's nothing to eat, and we hate this horrible manner. So they're grumbling. The Lord's had enough of these guys, and he sends poisonous snakes among the people, and many were bitten and died. The people came to Moses. Oh, no, we've sinned against the Lord. Pray that he'll take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to him, Make a replica of a snake, attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So, I'm from Australia. And I've got a, I've got a friend here, Betsy. Oh. Who, uh, <coughs> Jesse, I was looking at you. Snakes freak you out? <laughs> okay, who's, who's not too scared? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Not too scared? <laughs> like in boots and gloves. All right. <laughs> uh, 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 now imagine this, okay? Where the Israel hope came? You just took a step back. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine this: you're in the Israelite camp, and um, <laughs> and you get bit by a snake. <laughs> your blood pressure doing right now? Yeah. Oh, no. You're getting bitten by a snake, your blood pressure goes up, you're holding your heart, I'm holding mine, I'm, I'm the one speaking up here, and you're getting itchy, swelling, mouth goes dry, your heart rate, your breathing goes all funky, You get and you're going to die. And this is what Moses says, Puts it on a cross. This is the best cross I've got. He says, look at this and you're going to live. Of course, that's rubber. Look at that and you're going to live. It is the craziest thing. Like, it doesn't matter about... Can't go to the pharmacy. There's no medicine you can take. That's the solution. Well, look at that on a pole. Look at it. Yeah. And you know what? Many people died. Many people didn't look at that. That's just madness to me. But many died. So if we go back to John chapter 3, you've got now the 
conversation with Nicodemus that Jesus is having. And notice Jesus doesn't tell him like he's, he's told other people that he's interacted with. He doesn't say, go and sell everything you have, give it to the poor. He doesn't say, uh, you've got some sin in your life. But through the dialogue with Jesus right at the very beginning, he's using the metaphor of the Moses story and he's using that to say, but the Son of Man's got to be lifted up. Just like you have to look at that, you have to look at the Son of Man to be saved mm. for eternal life. Wow. Now this is, to look at this is physical healing. So you look at that, that doesn't mean, by the way, I, I don't believe that it means, oh, I looked at that and all of a sudden my heart rate, I'm probably still spewing my guts up for a while, but I just don't die. You know, nausea, spewing, the effects of snake bite. I don't think it left immediately. Might have. I don't know. I wasn't there in the wilderness. But what he's addressing with Nicodemus is in the whole concept about the, the rebirth. It's a spiritual sickness that they've got. That was to fix a physical illness, and he's dealing with Nicodemus in a spiritual illness, in a metaphor that he could understand. Because you know what Nicodemus's problem was? It was a Pharisaical problem, was belief. You whitewash tombs? Jesus didn't say that to Nico. Interestingly enough, Nico's mentioned three times in the Bible, all, all in John. And Nicodemus ends up actually as one of the two that go and embalm Jesus, brought 75 to 100 pounds of embalming stuff. And that was a huge amount of money, 33 mm -hmm. kilos. If you're from Australia, we use kilos, not pounds. So I believe Nico, through this dialogue and through this conversation that he had with Jesus, there was there's, there's an inquisitive nature about him. And he even says, your miraculous signs are evidence that God's with you, but I'm struggling. And so Jesus helps him with his unbelief. Just like that, for physical illness, but look at the Son of Man for spiritual healing or spiritual wellness. And I, and I suspect, given that Nico was there, part of the embalming, I think that Nico uh, had a... That was a radical encounter for him, and he changed. Mm -hmm. Now, I won't go into some of this. Not a lot of writings about Nico afterwards, but there is some suggestion that he actually did become a believer, kicked out of the Pharisaical group, um, which is interesting, but that's, that's not this part of John. But the, the part that I want to leave you with in here is who do you look at or who are you looking at for your spiritual sickness? Wow. I don't know. I don't know now. I'm too scared. That's the snake. <laughs> I'm looking at the snake. No, it's not the snake. But that's that's what Jesus is talking about here. The Son of Man has to be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him will have everlasting life. Everlasting beyond any snake bite or anything that life throws at us. And so that's the question that all of us are going to have to ask at some stage, or will be asked at some stage. Who do you believe in? And I know who I believe in. 